So welcome everybody. I wanted to give another application of linear programming, which is finding a line of best fit, uh, depending on how you define best fit. So what I've plotted here is um, some dots in the plane. We have y coordinates, think of those as your dependent variable and x coordinates, think of that as your independent variable. And you wanna find a line y equals ax plus b that fits these points as well as possible. So you can't find a line that goes through all of them, but you might find a line that models this trend relatively well. So I wanna first just talk about two different notions of error, L2 error versus L1 error. Um, okay, so, Let's say I have some line. I have no claim that this is a good fit. Okay, let's just say I have, I have some line. How do I talk about the error of this fit? We'll do error going um, straight up vertically. Another form of error would be perpendicular error. Okay, that's what's modeled, for example, in PCA, principal component analysis. All right, we'll just fit with straight up error. Okay. So each data point has some error. It's either above or below the line. Um, and if this is data point I, if this here is data point I, then its coordinates are XI and YI. And if our line, is y equals ax plus b, you know, then the error is, is this amount, I guess, this distance. And how far is this distance? Well, the top height is y sub i, and this bottom height is on the line. This is axi plus b. So the difference between those is our error is uh, axi plus b minus yi. I should take absolute values. Okay. That's the error, the vertical error of the ith data point. The difference between the, the true y value and the predicted y value based on our line. So when you minimize L2 error, you minimize the sum of squared errors, okay? So the penalty that you pay is not this vertical height, it's this vertical height squared. When you square the error, you can drop the absolute values if you want. Um, how you would solve this is just the uh, linear regression. If you've taken statistics, you've seen that before. Um, because everything's squared, you can sort of use calculus to solve this, right? When you start taking derivatives of squared things, you get uh, nice, easy, easy derivatives. That's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about L1 error. L1 error is when you minimize not the sum of squared errors, but just the sum of errors, not squared. So there's no, there's no squared there. Okay. So we're just summing the, the, um, the lengths of all these blue line segments. There are good reasons to do L1 error instead of L2 error, so. Let's draw a picture. So I wanna draw um, the L1 line of best fit and the L2 line of best fit. Of course, just by eye. Um, okay. The L2 line of best fit is gonna get pulled by this point. Okay, this, this point I would consider an outlier. The L2 line of best fit might look something like this, okay? And it's been 
pulled up above most of the data points. And the reason being is we have to pay this error squared. And when you square a large error, it gets much even larger, okay? So outliers can quite, quite drastically affect the L2 line of best fit. The L1 line of best fit will be a little bit more like this. So this is um, L2 line. This is the L1 line. So the point being, yeah, I've done worse on this data point, right? For the L1 line, I've done, I've done worse on the outlier data, data point. But I'm not squaring. I'm not squaring that error, so it doesn't grow so much. And maybe I do significantly better on all the other data points um, that, that in the L1 sense, it's, it's better. Okay, so L1 errors often are more robust to outliers is the uh, message I'm trying to, to say here. And that's why you might consider this problem of minimizing the L1 error. Question so far? Um, what's what's a liability that the L1 uh, fitting has compared to the L2? Oh goodness, I am sure there are liabilities. First of all, it's harder to solve. Um, folks, do, do, does anyone have ideas there? Liability of L1 error. I don't remember exactly, but I think it may uh, have something to do with um, sort of statistical properties of like, um, perhaps it's harder to show it's unbiased or um, sort of uh, was it a faithful um, representation of your data. But I'm remembering from a long time ago, so that may not be correct. Thanks, I, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, there's certain li liabilities and I think Lander's um, um, onto it. Okay, so let's, let's um, solve this linear programming problem to find the line of best fit, best fit in the sense of L1 error, okay? So the L1 error problem we're gonna solve using linear programming. All right, so, the first thing that you might write down is we want to minimize the sum of errors. So each EI is the error of the ith data point. And so we can just write down a formula for the error of the ith data point. It's the difference between the predicted output coming from the line minus the actual output. Okay, so XI and YI are our like, fixed constant values coming from our data set here. And A and B are the variables that we're trying to, to optimize, trying to find the best line. Um, so I should just say, if this is the um, i data point, then EI is just this distance. Okay. We haven't yet written our constraints in a linear format. And the problem is these absolute values. So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those absolute values. So let's actually move past our brainstorming and go to the actual linear program. The actual linear program, we minimize the sum of errors each single constraint, which has to hold for all i, we're now gonna split into two, okay? And these are for all i, for all data points i. Let's examine our constraints. Have I really modeled this equality correctly? by two inequalities. So it's a little subtle, so let's go through it. Okay, so what do the constraints guarantee? Certainly um, EI is bigger than this term, 
and it's also bigger than the negative of that term. So it's bigger than both of them, okay? So EI is at least as big as AXI plus B minus YI, and it's at least as big as negative KXI plus B minus YI. So it's big as, it's as, at least as big as the maximum of those two. What is the maximum of a number and its negative? The maximum of a, a number and its negative is just the absolute value. Okay, so the EI variables, these errors are at least as large as, as what they're supposed to model, you know, the error in displacement. However, what we're trying to minimize is the sum of all of these. So in an optimal solution, it's not so hard to see that this inequality is actually gonna be an equality, okay? So when we actually solve this, we're trying to make the sum of EIs as large as possible. We're trying to make, sorry, as small as possible. We're trying to make each EI as small as possible. There's no reason to yet to ever not have a, a, an equality here when you actually solve this problem. When you solve this problem, when you find the solution to this linear program, the optimum is gonna have equality there. So that, that's why we're satisfied that we've indeed modeled this equality well enough in our linear programming problem with inequalities. Questions about that? To finish, the moral here is that um, objective functions or constraints with absolute values can often be handled in linear programming problems by introducing extra variables. So here are extra variables where these, these errors or extra constraints. You know, the extra constraints would be here. We went from one equality constraint involving an absolute value to two inequality constraints with no absolute values. Thanks. <laughs>